Hey, what's up and welcome back to the HK Rifle Works YouTube channel. Today, I am going to show you how to find your lands in your bolt action precision rifle. So there's plenty of ways to do this. Uh, the biggest ones that I've seen is people will take their brass and essentially cut a slit in the neck. And what they'll do is they'll let the bullet slide in and out of the case neck, right? And uh, what they do is essentially is seat it long, chamber it in their rifle, and then unchamber it very carefully. And what this is supposed to do is essentially the, the rifling is supposed to push the bullet into the case. The issue with that is if, if 20 people did this, you're gonna come up with 20 different answers. What I'm gonna show you today is objectively the best way to find it. And if 20 people do this, 20 people are gonna come up with the exact same answer on the exact same rifle. So hopefully this helps you out. There are some cool tools out there. I think Hornady makes like a modified case, but if you don't wanna buy any specialized tools or anything like that, this way works absolutely great. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to pull our bolt and disassemble it. And we'll get into that real quick right now. We are going to touch base on our bolt. So essentially what we've done is, I don't know if you can see that if the camera will focus, we have popped the ejector out. And if you look at the bolt face, that hole at three o'clock, that's where the ejector uh, usually goes. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to touch base with y'all on regarding removing your ejector is you only need to do that for push fed actions or push feed actions. And the reason why you do that is this is a control round feed action. And if you see on the bolt face right here, there is no plunger ejector on this. There's a little cutout right here because the ejector is actually mounted get down in here in the receiver so I don't know if you could see it's that little silver tab sticking up on the left rail right there and essentially when you pull the bolt back that little tab rides in this cutout right here in the bolt turn the bolt the right way and essentially it will kick your shell out of the ejection port so anyways, I just wanted to bring that point up real quick, just in case you are doing this on a control round feed action and not a push feeding action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our caulking piece right here. And why we wanna remove this caulking piece is I'll show you on the rifle. We need this bolt to be completely loose in the rifle, if that makes sense. Essentially, we just want, we don't want any contact. So if you look, at your caulking piece and your bolt shot and everything. And this corresponds with the sear on your trigger. So when you cock this down, I don't know if you can hear that and see that it's, you have resistance on the bolt. Like when I lift it up, I feel resistance on the bolt. Then you'll get to here, go past your primary extraction cam like that. And just like that. So you don't really want this because we need to be able to measure this finely, if that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull the bolt and I'm gonna grab my tool here. So this is a bolt disassembly tool. And you can get these at like Brownells and stuff like that. And what we want to do is essentially hook it on the caulking piece and rotate out. So essentially you can rotate out your spring, your firing pin, everything like that. And it just stays captured in here. Now look at the bolt when we put it in. It has no caulking piece and bolt shroud to interface or do anything on the sear of the trigger. So when we push it forward, it just falls. You see, there's no tension, nothing like that. So this is important when we're measuring the bullet in the chamber, essentially. You want to make sure that this bolt is like this when you do it. So second thing, we are going to take a size piece of brass. I have an extra one here just for insurance in case I go too far. And we are going to take our projectile. And what we're gonna do is we are going to seat this purposefully long. We're gonna incrementally seat it deeper, deeper, deeper into the case until we find our lands, essentially, or we find where it touches our lands. All right, so we got our press set up and we're ready to roll. And we have a micrometer adjustable bullet seater die. As well as this, it's important to have an O-Drive comparator. This is a Sinclair O-Drive comparator. And also a good set of calipers. Our Mitatoyo digital ones died on us, so we are just using our backup pair of analog calipers. So the first thing that you want to do is deliberately set this cartridge long. So back out your die a good bit. 
and you will go ahead and just seat it long. All right, so we have our bullet that's seated pretty long, if you can see it. And essentially what we're gonna do is chamber this round, and granted, it's not loaded. Obviously, there's no powder, there's no primer. So what we're gonna do is finagle it in our chamber, and we're gonna close the bolt. Now we can close the bolt, and what happens is when we lift up on the bolt, you can feel that it's kind of sticky. And then once you get to this portion right here, right, you can feel the bullet being pulled out of the land. So when you raise the bolt, watch this, listen to this. Just right there, that's the bullet being pulled out of the lands. So right when we get to this point, the bolt isn't all the way up. That's it being pulled out of the land. So from here to here. So what we wanna do is we wanna go back to the press and seat this bullet down a little further. So I'm actually gonna do this off camera while we're talking. And I'll go down two thousandths on my press, right? Now we'll come back. It still looks like it's pulling out just a tad. So we'll go back to the press, bump it down with another thousandth or two. See, just right there, it stops there and then right there. So I'm gonna do this another time or two. Oh my gosh, it is literally just touching. So let's try it once more. All right, so we are in and I cannot feel the bullet pulling out of the lands at all. This bolt lift is completely smooth. It's not hanging up at all. So this is essentially gonna be our touch point right here. So we're gonna call this touching the lands. And what we're gonna do is we are going to take our, reach in front of here, our bullet comparator, O-drive comparator. We're gonna find the 22. I don't know if y'all can see that. We are gonna put our bullet in there. And what I know is this hex nut is exactly one inch long. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna measure it here. And again, you wanna make sure that this brass is sized and that your primer is out as well. If your primer isn't out, say if you have a cratered primer or anything like that, you could get a false reading. So it looks like we are at 2.935. So that's gonna be 1.935. All right, so I was able to back up the camera just a tad and our cartridge base to O-Jive at touch is 1.935 for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my press and I'm gonna dial down 20 thousandths down. So I'm gonna go 5, 10, 15. I will do 18. 18 thousandths down. And I can feel that bullet seat further further down into the case. So the number that we should be looking at for this right now is 1.915. So 20 thousandths deeper than 1.935 is 1.915. All right. So I don't know if y'all can see that right there. It's reading 2.915. But remember, the hex key or the O-Drive comparator is exactly one inch. So we're calling it at 1.915 right there. And that may be 1.916, so maybe I'll bump it down one more thousandth. Seat that bullet a little bit further into the case. And then we will take our last measurement. Y'all can see that is spot on at 1.915. So we can effectively say that this round is 20 thousandths off of our lands, cartridge base to O drive. Let's see what this is, too. Is our cartridge overall length for this is 
four zero. So I really hope that that helps. Uh, this is just one of the ways that I've been doing it and it seems to work well, uh, exactly right, essentially every single time. And like we said in the beginning of the video, 20 different people, heck, 100 different people can do this and 100 different people will get the exact same answer. So it really takes out a lot of the guesswork. And uh, again, I just wanted to say thanks so much for tuning in. I know these videos can get boring or long, but I really appreciate y'all making it to the end. Uh, if you haven't, subscribe, share with your friends, comment, um, hit that thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you didn't, let us know what's up. But um, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog. Tell your dog I said hi. We'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, and don't forget to reassemble your rifle. Put your bolt shroud and cocking piece and everything back together and make sure to reinstall your ejector and you're good to go.